Adam Holloway is a reporter for World in Action. For a month, he's been carrying a hidden camera and living the life of a homeless down and out on the streets of London. In part two of this special report, he comes up against the everyday violence of street life. It's week two, and my progress to get a roof over my head has been down rather than up. I'm still living rough at Lincoln's Inn Fields, and now I'm forced to live off charity and my wits. Excuse me, mate, can you spread some change? I know now why there are so many people begging on the streets. The benefit system for the homeless is so complex. It fails to deliver support for the most needy. I'm down to three pounds, and my plan is to find a job. But first, I must beg. Excuse me, sir, I'm in distress. Can you spare some change, please? We left it all upstairs, I'm afraid. Oh, OK, thank you. Excuse me, mate. Can you spare some change, please? Old hands have told me the young are more likely to give money than the middle-aged. That's all I've got, mate. It's I yours. Pre You're very kind. Thanks, mate. No. Thanks a lot, mate. Practice beggars also look out for single women to try to pressurise into giving money. Excuse me, can you spare some change, please, though? I'm sorry. OK, money. beautiful dress, though. Excuse me, sir, can you spare a quid? Couples are a good bet, too. The man doesn't want to appear mean in front of his wife or girlfriend. Thank you very much indeed, sir. I appreciate that. Okay. Good night. Good night. Time to live off charity. I head for the social care unit in the crypt of St Martin's in the Fields where hundreds like me come for free sandwiches and tea. Old timers have always come here. Now there are significant numbers of younger people caught with me in the benefit trap. This is the first time I've ever been in a situation like this, mate. In my life, like, you know what I mean? I've never seen nothing like it. Do you know what I mean? I've never experienced it. Like, I mean, it's all not a jail in that book, like, I've never seen this, like, I didn't know this world existed, man. I'm up here because of a reason, you know what I mean? I got involved with idiots, like, drugs and all that, right? And I owe people money, that's all I'm here for. Have you just come in? Yes, I have. Would you like a packet of biscuits as well? Uh, yes, please, thank you. An atmosphere of violence seems to follow the newer, younger homeless who are on the streets. Chocolate chip one. That's great, thank you. OK, thanks. It's scary being on the street, man, cos, like, there's loads of people going around slashing people up while they're asleep. Who do you know what's out for on the streets when you're asleep? There's a few guys last year who kicked in the first one when they were asleep. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm not there, I'm not kidding now. Honestly, I've yeah. seen some people being really nearly half killed. What about that lad in the London Connection? He's only a little kid, man. He got slashed up to... And the lad kept slashing him and slashing him and slashing him and just wouldn't stop, man. Just kept cutting him and cutting him and cutting him and cutting him. I see the violence at first hand when I try to get into the Bateman buildings, a government-funded hostel for the up to 26-year-olds in Soho. Excuse me, do you know where I find the Bateman buildings in Soho Square? You're looking for somewhere to doss down for the night? Yeah, I've, I've made an arrangement with them. This is it? This is Bateman buildings? Yeah. Oh, OK. Already, things are ugly. There are only a limited number of places at this free hostel and many of these young people are barred for abusive behaviour. Scouse, the young man from Liverpool I'd met earlier, is in the thick of the action. I'll sleep on the street and I'll punch your head in when you wake up tomorrow oh, morning. Yeah, yeah. It's fucking half past nine. Come on. There's nowhere left open this time of night. I'm not going to go nowhere else. I shouldn't be nowhere. I shouldn't be fucking nowhere else. This Geordie will be sleeping out on the streets tonight. Bastards. A drug dealer offers us methadone tablets for 75p each. Seizing on the mood of violence, Scouse steals them. I pick you, better, you better give them the back one now. You've got to wear this over your head. Who, me? Oh, I've just been sitting there. I'll take the face off you, mate. Yeah, I'm telling you now, you better give them back. 
Now a bottle has turned into a jagged blade. Do you want it? Put the belt away now, because I'll give you better it. Give them back. I haven't got nothing. The arriving police first question Geordie about the threats outside the hostel. Okay, the situation is they don't want you hanging around the door. If you've got anything to say, you come back with someone. And they find some listen, No, listen. Last night they reckoned but I was you'll have, to, you'll have to look after yourself today. Everybody up there knows that I am. Yeah, well, you've been causing trouble and that's why you're not Look after myself. I'm going to pick up on this too. Okay, well, that's your problem. So you've got to go. Suddenly, the drug dealer hits a policeman. The police don't retaliate. They're wisely adopting a low-key approach to the escalating chain of violence. It's Scouse's turn to be asked about the missing drugs. I wouldn't dream of going to rob an old lady or rob a mesh or rob that. My days were robbing her over. Man. All I wanted to do was just be put left alone and left my city, man, to get away from her all. And I just I keep getting stopped, man. I'm tired of all of it and I want to see someone about it, even if we have to walk into Bow Street, man, and that's for the top man in there, and I'm going to tell him this, that I keep getting harassed, man. I'm getting harassed on the street, man. I've just, been locked up. I've just been locked up for six years right. of my life, you know what I mean? Still without a bed for the night, Scouse returns to the hostel door. Where would you go if you didn't go here, Scouse? Do you want me? Yeah. Well, let me have something to eat, then. Oh, for say, where am I going to go? Nah, listen, man, I want to be here with me mates and that, you know? Let me have something to eat, then. What? You're f***ing bad, you know? I've just got out of the hospital, man. Take a seat, mate. Listen, the other night... Mr. Martins, you were, you were talking about the people who lost their self-respect, yeah? Do you remember? Mm. And you'll be just like that. Go home. You better a bit of change, mate. Sorry. Holloway, Adam Holloway. Adam Holloway. Uh, you letting Adam in, yeah? Good. Adam, you booked in anyway. Listen, so. if, if he's got pneumonia, I'd rather stay on the street and let him in. You booked it. You, do you want to come in and have a chat? OK, first of all. Right. But if you've got a place and he's had pneumonia, I'd rather I'd rather stay on the street and he'll come in. I'm not being funny, you know. I get in. Scouts doesn't. He's barred. We we'll just have to run through the rules. We do it with everyone. Um, we don't allow any old, uh, no drugs, no weapons in here at all. If you've got any medication, I'd ask you to hand it in to one of the I'm not got any. Okay. Um, we don't allow any offensive or abusive threat behaviour at all. Okay. Inside, the atmosphere is relaxed. People are behaving normally. The streets breed violence because outside the kids feel they mustn't lose face. Their situation is so hopeless, they need to make a stand. Tonight I get a hot meal and for the first time in a week I'm not sleeping rough. Oh look, listen, listen, right. I need to be in there for something to eat at least and then... Oh, so you want me to starve to death on the street? To retrieve my situation, I'm at the Chadwick Street Employment Centre trying to get a job. The office is helping with my application to be a security guard. Right, yes, possibly. I'm phoning um, with someone interested in your vacancy for security officers. Yes, just a moment. A word. Hello? Uh, yes. But the only possible problem is at the moment I'm homeless living in Lincoln's Inn Fields and under a piece of plastic. And is that going to affect my application? And you couldn't take me without a permanent address. Uh, okay. Thank you. Same way over. <clears throat> I would, I would, I wouldn't tell them that you were homeless. Really? Yeah. Don't tell them. Right. Just get a different, get a dress from, uh, join, uh, join a job club or something like that, and use their address. Right. Because really, you won't get anywhere without an address. Right. I mean, obviously, they, uh, they're just prejudiced against homeless people. No address, no job. Instead, I resume my efforts to get state benefit from the same office. I've already spent nearly 15 hours queuing for forms and interviews, and this is my fourth attempt. I've got nowhere to live, yet I'm still no nearer getting help. So, so you're saying that I might actually not get any money till the 7th? If the worst comes to the worst. Till this Friday. It, it could be sorted out today. I mean, there's time to do something about it. I mean, my advice to you would be to go to Tavry Stock Square with these two dull cars, like you say, you know, if you do move on from office to office, it does slow things down a bit. The thing is, why on earth 
should I get arrested for begging? Because people can't link things up between offices. Why should I do that? They're sending me to the Tavistock Square office again. I'm going there because for a few days last week I changed to a government hostel and the paperwork can't keep up. When you're homeless, you spend much of your time walking between benefit offices. How many simply give up? I must pursue this fast to see where it leads. So do you think I'm going to get some money today? I can't say for certain, firmly, but the chances are... Hello? That's all right. You haven't received it yet. Right, thank you very much. Uh, the odds, the odds outweigh the evens, basically, if I can put it that way. Why is that? Uh, because of the time. So I've got to go back now to Chadwick Street mm -hmm. and get another B1 to bring back to you so that I can tell you I'm no fixed abode. You have to complete that B1 to say that you're home okay and hand it to work. And then, can you give me some money? That is possible. That is possible, but I can't confirm. I go back to the Bateman buildings when it gets dark to try to get a free place. This evening there are young teenagers here and a police juvenile protection unit maintains a careful presence. Some protection unit and you're such a sweet little thing, isn't it? They're concerned about you. Scouse is still there in a sleeping bag trying to attract enough sympathy to get in. This is your favourite doorway, isn't it? There you go, have a drag. Cheers. You're not doing that folks in here? I'm sleeping on the street, mate. What's that? Because I'm a scouser, mate. <laughs> it's actually illegal to sleep on the streets. It's not. Well, you can lock it up and give it a bed Give it a bed, bed and breakfast is even better, isn't it? You yeah. just don't sleep back for long time. I don't want it. What's happening? It's taking the piss, man. Why? You won't let me in because I'm a scouser. As if at the flick of a switch, Scouse's anger, the rage of homeless youth, takes over. I don't even know what I'm doing in London, man. It's full of stamps, mate. Full of... Spare a bit of change, do this, do that. But they won't get up on their feet and do their own thing, will they? None of them. Because they're all little pricks, mate. Oh. All they want to do is beg, 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 but they won't get out do what they can really do, man. Sorry. What? You bar me for nothing. I'll sleep on the street for the rest of my life if I have to. But I'll get on my feet. I'll get there eventually, mate. Well, I want my clothes. Can for five, please. Yeah, 10p, mate. I'm I'll giving you a match to everyone, mate. I'll give you 10p in a little while. No, I'll you give it to me. Guys, oh. you selling ciggies to the beggars, mate. Listen, mate. Since man, I've been here, I've given away three cigarettes. Yes, Listen, mate, I'll give thousands of cigarettes to the boys on the street. Oh, you mean? I buy 40, 50 cigarettes a day, mate. And I just <laughs> give them away. Yeah. I give my five stars. In this atmosphere, I mustn't show weakness, but selling the few cigarettes I've begged is a crucial mistake. I'll buy you 10 ciggies tomorrow. I don't want 10 ciggies. I'll buy you 10 tomorrow. I just tomorrow. don't want to be taken Shut for... I just don't Shut want to be taken for a ride by you Shut up, mate. Do you want to go? Do you want to go? Come here, let's... Go, mate, because I've had enough of you. Take the piss out of the homeless man. Selling ciggies to the homeless. You don't do it, right? You give them a ciggy, man. You give them a ciggy. There's no harm in giving them a ciggy, man. Give them a fucking cigarette, man. They're on the street with you. They're on the street with you, mate. They'll help you if you need help. But if you want to take the piss and sell ciggies, do it, mate. But you get your back slashed when you're not looking, mate. I'm telling you, you get cut up. You get no friends that way, mate. Mate. They'll kill you, mate. Ten pay for a cigarette. Do you want to dig me? It's you look like you want to hit me. Smashed. You look like you want to hit me. So go on, do it, and I'll put you right out. I'll hit you once, mate, and you'll go. You'll go, mate. Believe it, you'll go. I'm not threatening you. I'm promising you, you'll go, mate. So if you want to do it, do it. Give me one hit. One hit, mate. But you better put me down, because you're going, mate. And that's it. I only ask you for a cigarette, man. Oh, Don't want it, but I hope that you never had no good luck in your life. My luck could scarcely be worse. I'm without state benefit. I've got no money, no home, and I'm looking for a job as a kitchen porter. Excuse me. Where do I go to um, see if there's any temporary work in the kitchens? We don't take temporary staff. You don't? Oh, OK. Your best bet for temporary staff is to hotels. We're just a restaurant. Really? OK. The Savoy Hotel is next to Simpson's Restaurant on the Strand. I try here. Where do I go to apply for temporary jobs? 
What do you mean temporary jobs? Well, temporary jobs in the hotel. Well, we've got the application form here for the full time, but temporary job, I don't know. You don't really have any, then? No. Where do I um, go if I want to get a job here? Do you want to get a job here? Yeah. Right, do you, do you know if they've got any at the moment? Next, the Grosvenor House Hotel. Who do I talk to you about um, temporary work here? There isn't any work. Isn't there? Right. My name's Adam, I was staying here. At night, I head for a free squat. It has an unsavoury reputation. The old ambulance station at Waterloo. There are no rules at the Hotel Paradiso. Can I make yourself some tea, mate? Huh? Can I make yourself some tea? Both young and old live here. Many of them drug addicts and alcoholics. Is this rock bottom? Shadowy figures move amongst the soiled mattresses. This place feels ready for violence, so I sleep fully clothed should I need to get out in a hurry. I wake next morning to the sounds of a man offering to kill me and a violent argument with an old lady going on in the kitchen. I told you when you got your breakfast, you have your breakfast, your cup of tea, you make your bed, you get your stuff, and you get the f out the door. Right? No, because this is Sunday, right? So what Don't even dispute what I'm saying to you, right? Don't even think about it. I told you when you came in for your breakfast, you were going to eat your breakfast, right? Drink your cup of tea. I haven't had it. Right? Off you haven't had it. Don't bother lying to me, what right? If you want to lie, get out the door now, because I'll physically put you through it. Excuse me, love. Who do I give my name to if I want to come back tonight? Who do you give your name to? Yeah, do you I don't have to I give your name. Okay. Just come back around about five. <laughs> don't worry about that. Right, she's, she just gets on the cane. Um, come back around about five o'clock. Right. right, and there should be a meal ready at five. Cheers. The police are in next, looking for a murder witness. It's only eight o'clock and we haven't even had breakfast. Where to go to follow that, but to a fashionable Mayfair restaurant, job hunting. For the benefit of the Americans, is it? Yeah. I get as far as the kitchen for this interview. Presumably a good sign. Things are looking up. The restaurant want me to ring back tomorrow. Okay, what, shall I call tomorrow morning? Yeah, okay. Okay, we'll do. Cheers, Tim. Right, bye, mate. In the meantime, I'm still chasing the benefit money I'm owed. I hit the streets again. If you remember, I was told at Chadwick Street, where I am now, to go to Tavistock Square. Tavistock then sent me back here to get another B1 form for a change of address. So here I am at Chadwick Street for the third time. Do you think I've got any chance of getting any money today? You've got to be worked out, love. I've not received a payment order from the DSS yet. So when, when a payment order comes from... So is there a lot of point in me going back to Tavistock Square and trying to get some money? Yeah, you could do. I might give you a loan of some sort, yeah. What, you mean I didn't really need to do a change of address then? No. Could your daughter's coming here? So back to the Tavistock Square office for the third time, having just been told that I didn't need a change of address form, so needn't have gone to Chadwick Street at all. Mr Holloway. Yeah. Yes, sir. Um, basically, I don't have good news for you. I know you wouldn't be happy about that. The money is technically due to you on your signing day, OK? If you were to come in on Friday, then you would be due payment. So if I come in tomorrow, there's no chance of me getting payment. It's only on Friday. Yeah, because it's not actually due to you until Friday. There so is absolutely nothing I can do about it. Back to my squat at Hotel Paradiso in Waterloo. Tonight, there are security guards outside. What's going on here, then? What's going on? Nothing. I live here, mate. Oh, no, it's closed. So has someone got... Graham Baldwin left this morning. That's all we know. Do you know Mr. Graham Baldwin? I don't know him, but I know Tony. I know Graham is the, like the boss, though. He left this morning. What, on the run or something? No, he just closed yeah, it just down. I was allowed to look for my belongings. <laughs> Where's your gear, then? I don't know, it's gone. 
Can you just shine it under here, please? Cheers. I don't recommend the blankets, mate. Ah, God. So, what, was there a big fight here or something, then? There was a lot of trouble, I think, one night. Somebody got a fight. Worried by the rumours of violence, the owners have taken out a possession order and closed the place down. Well, well, we we by a hundred or so more people are without roofs tonight. Cheers. Uh, thanks for your help. All right. Okay. This radio reporter knows what happened. Excuse me, love. Excuse me, I'm sorry to bother you. Can you just tell me what happened there? Because I live there, you know. Yeah. Well, all I know is help um, decided to close it. Because uh, as far as I know, a possession order was taken out by the owners on Friday. Right. So it's... I didn't hear anything about this, you see. Because, I, I mean, I live there, like... Uh, yeah. So what's happened to all the other people, then? Where's everyone gone? Do you know? I asked them where people who would normally be staying there would be tonight. And they back in the street. I head for the bull ring a few hundred yards away to see if any of the Paradiso residents have ended up here. Whatever happens, this is where I'll be sleeping tonight. London's cardboard city. Excuse me, mate. Do you know where there might be a handout tonight where I could get some blankets and that? No. You hungry? Uh, yeah, it'd be great. Cheers. What organisation are you guys from? It's a church called Believer Centre. Oh, right. Thank you very much. That's kind of leaflet. Thank you. I shall read that. Yeah. Is it going to be all right if I doss down here? Is that all right? Yeah. Sure. Cheers. How long have you been here? Oh, all right. Yeah, I, I was at Lincoln's in Fields, you know, like for a couple of weeks. Oh, it's bad up there. Is it? Bad. Oh, better off you. Really? Yeah. Well, a lot of violence in that up there. Oh, can't be very well up there. Yeah, yeah. No, you're right. I'm sure you are. <laughs> this is the day I finally sign on at Chadwick Street. Today I might get some money. Now it's only a matter of a three-mile walk into the Tavistock Square office for the fourth time. Tell me something. Yeah. What, what happens when you've got someone who right, isn't young and fit and able to walk between office and office and office, mm. walk miles and miles in every week just mm. to get 39 quid? I mean, what happens when people can't do it this way, you know, mentally, and they can't do it physically? What happens to those people? <laughs> That's a good question. That's what, a good question. I mean, for me, you know, it's hard enough. What, what about them? I, I, I do appreciate what you're saying. Unfortunately, there are very, there are very, very few sort of loop, loopholes within the system. We're putting it down within the next five minutes or so. Really? That's amazing. All right. Remarkable, yeah. A record, probably. <laughs> record <laughs> time. Should we give you a shout when you know okay. I'm ready? Though? Thanks. Right. I started on the streets 13 days ago with 30 pounds in my pocket. Since last Friday, I've had nothing other than that which I could beg from members of the public. Throughout the time, I've been trying to get money through the benefit system. I've walked over 28 miles across central London. I've spent over 22 hours between benefit offices and in them. But at last today, I was successful and I did get a gyro check for £45.31. Success did have its downside. I was meant to phone the restaurant that had offered me work as a kitchen porter. I couldn't. I was standing in a dole queue. Hello? Hi, Caroline. Yeah. Hello, my name's Adam Holloway. I, uh, I came and saw you on Thursday about the possibility of your job as a kitchen porter. Yeah. Um, and you asked me to call you back. Yeah, I'm afraid we've given it to somebody else. Oh, damn. I was, uh, I was in, the, in the social security office on Friday afternoon. That's why I couldn't call you. Right. You've given, well, you've given it to someone else. Back at Lincoln's Inn, I join others whose crisis estate seems powerless to resolve. This is their home. In the next episode, I test how easy it is for me to get a permanent roof over my head. First, I ask Camden Town Hall for a council house. How long do you reckon it will take if I'm ready to I would tell you. A year? Yeah, it could be. And I cannot tell you, there are many people on the list. I am homeless. I'm living at Lincoln's Inn Field. Next, I try to rent a room through accommodation agencies. Hello, is that the b and in Highgate? Yeah, do you take DSS people? You don't. OK, thank you for your help. Goodbye. Even if I can rent a room, I may need a deposit running to hundreds of pounds. Difficult when you're both homeless and out of work. 
so I try the DSS again. So I'd like to apply for a crisis loan to get a deposit for a flat. It's not a crisis as far as they can see. I see. Finally, Adam Holloway gets a room with a landlord who preys off people like himself. His dubious multi-million pound property business exploits the housing benefit system. Watch part three after the general election.